ensemble. Hello everybody out there, I'm Garrett. You're watching 11 Bang Bang. Today we have a bit of a rarity. Yes, we are shooting a single shot again. And yes, we are shooting a trap door again. But this is a particular trap door that they only made about 3,000 of. This is the model of 1869 Cadet Rifle. And you may say, well, Garrett, that looks just like a model 1868 Springfield Military Rifle, and it does. But this is a shorter gun. Not only is it shorter, the way you can tell a Cadet Rifle is no sling swivels on the band or the trigger guard. The stock is shorter, and the stock is almost an eighth of an inch thinner all the way along. Why is that? Well, these were made for West Point Cadets, and they only made about 3,000 of this particular model. Later on, on the 73, they made more Cadet Rifles. There's a few 66 Cadet Rifles. But the 1869 Cadet Rifle, they only made about 3,000 of them, and only specifically for a few schools, including West Point. Now, the reason you have to be a little bit careful is because years later, all the colleges and high schools and things would pick up ROTC programs and things like that, and Bannerman would take these rifles and, per the school's request, cut them down to the same size. However, they would not have the thinner butt plate and they would have sling swivels unless somebody took them off. And usually they're not quite right just in length. But this one is an authentic rare bird, shoots 5070. Obviously, after the schools got done with them, a lot of these did go to National Guards and things. So we don't know if this thing has ever fired a shot in anger, maybe in the Spanish-American War, but I highly doubt it because it's chambered in 5070 and not 4570. 5070 is the first standard issue military center fire that was used by all branches and basically everybody in the military at the same time. This is when America first adopted a standard center fire rifle. And I know some people are gonna say, well, what about the Maynard rifle and this and that? Yes, those were not adopted standard across the entire military. This is the first center fire cartridge in a standard military rifle to see combat. And that was actually at the uh, Battle of the Wagon Box. I'm not going to go into all that right now. Actually, technically it was the Battle of the, the Hayfield fight, which was the day before the Wagon Box fight. But I'm not going to go into all that right now because I do have a history series coming out on all these trapdoors. And this one, of course, is going to fit right in. But I had never shot a 69 Cadet rifle. And so we loaded up some ammo. These are big, heavy 450 grain bullets. And there's 70 grains of powder in this case, which is slightly shorter than the 4570, which believe it or not, that is why this case was adopted before the 4570, because Ulysses S. Grant thought that the shorter cartridge would be better for the military. Also allowed for a slightly shorter receiver. All right, enough talking about this thing. Let's shoot it. All right, so I am left-handed, so this isn't exactly military, but we are going to attempt to go back to half cock, open it, place that big old fat 5070 slug in there, I've never shot this gun before, so just to see where it hits, I'm gonna go out to one of those white targets. I'm gonna aim at the middle divot. <laughs> so anyway, now we know where it's hitting. I'm gonna go back to half cock, open it up, kick that shell out. And that's one of those magical shells that just falls back in upside down. All right, let's see if we can get another one out. This belt, like I said, is made for 4570, so they're a little tight in there. All right, so now we know kind of what it's doing. It's hitting a little high at that range. Let's go out to 40 yards to the red plate. I believe we smacked that red plate hard. Wow, those 5070s really hit hard. Whoo! Up. Oh, I always have to remind myself I can use a half cock on this gun. And out comes the casing. Catch that cameraman. Propane bottle. Wow, that hits hard. Has, has a little recoil too on this little light rifle. One thing I have to say, I've shot a lot of trap doors. This cadet rifle probably has the worst trigger out of any of them that I've shot. Here, on the fly. All right, now uh, let's take a railroad plate. This brass is so cheap, sell it on every street corner. That's a lie, right now it is not for sale on every street corner. Star Line's been out for a long time. It's kind of hard to collect this stuff. All right, you think we'll break the middle plate or we'll take it off the wire? It's already cracked. This is a hard hitting round. What's your bet, cameraman? 
probably break it. I think it'll take it off the wire. <laughs> that is fun, guys. A little red knockdown plate. This is uh, from where I'm standing, about 28, 30 yards. I think we hit it. Let's shoot a gong. Yes, sir. Woo Those things are forever more hot. I would hate to be a buffalo, or especially a man, get hit by that 5070 cartridge. Now I want a McNelly Sharps in 5070. Really bad. That is a fun cartridge to shoot. It's even better than 4570. I don't know why it kicks a little harder, to be quite honest. Amazingly, the hammer setup on this one, sometimes even on the 66, the way the hammer's shaped, it's kind of difficult to get this uh, door open on half cock. So this one, though, just goes right past it. We're going to go out here now to 100 yards, and obviously we're shooting around 4 to 6 inches high at 2530. So I'm wondering if it falls right in at 100. We'll see. Aim right on. Evidently, I'm not flinching too bad. <laughs> Let's do a man-sized target at 350. All right, so I got my sight up, and obviously these old guns, a lot of them, the sight won't stay up. But the bottom setting with the uh, ladder up is actually 300. So let's put that right on the ghost of Cowboy Bill. All right, we're setting for 300. Watch, I'm going to aim a little high. Ha! <laughs> yes, sir! What was funny is at 350 yards, the bullet bounced down and hit the dirt before uh, the sound got back. So it, I was like, oh, I missed. And then bong. <laughs> what do you say, Caleb? Would you like to give this a try? I'll give it a try. Shoot the gong, Caleb. Ready? You broke it. I didn't know we could break that. <laughs> All right, guys, let's see how quick we can run this trap door. One in the mouth, one in the gun, one in the hand, just like Gary Cooper, Springfield Rifle. Not too bad. I think it even ran that faster than I did that uh, carbine. Caleb just found one of those expanded 50 caliber slugs that hit one of those railroad plates over there. Would not be good. That's well over an inch and a half all the way around. Yeah, I'd hate to be the buffalo that got hit with one of those. Keep that, Caleb. We'll put that back in the pot. All right. Let's see if I can find another round here. Let's shoot. A diet Pepsi bottle at 10 yards and miss. We didn't miss, but uh, didn't blow it up the way I thought it would. Another bottle. Don't adjust for any windage there. <laughs> One more time. Let's take out the big bottle. Let's see if we can clean that water out of the bottom of it by aiming low. I think we got it. All right, let's clear this bottle. Two for the price of one. <laughs> The final thoughts on the 69 Cadet Rifle. Woo. I don't know if it's a rifle or a cartridge because to be quite honest, this is the first time I've shot 5070 is in this rifle, but man, that is a fun gun to shoot. It could be that the rifle's just a little bit smaller and handier, I don't know, but that cartridge is just a blast to shoot. I can't wait to do all the rest of the rifles because we actually have all the Springfield trapdoor rifles from the 65 all the way through to the 
88. And I've shot a lot of them, but man, that 5070 cartridge is fun. And there's like five guns in there that chamber the 5070 cartridge. Uh, light, handy, obviously used at West Point or another school possibly. More than likely with these West Point because they only made 3,000 of them. Very accurate. I was able to hit a cowboy bill at 350 offhand. Uh, that would have hurt because <laughs> of the way it hit so hard. Just a hard hitting round, and I'm very, very much falling in love with the 5070 round. Like I said, I really wanted a McNelly Sharps, but now I think I'm one in 5070 instead of 4570. So, anyway, I can't do any more than that other than give this gun a thumbs up. Trust in God, keep your powder dry. Mm -hmm.